It has been a known fact that the glaciers in the Arctic Circle are melting rapidly. There has been long-held consensus about the poles heating up as a definitive sign of climate change. But in a recent study, it has been found that the Arctic is warming four times faster than the rest of the planet and not the two to three times that has commonly been reported. And some parts of the region are warming up to seven times faster. The Earth is approximately 1.1 degrees Celsius warmer than it was at the start of the Industrial Revolution. But that warming has not been uniform, with some regions warming at a far greater pace, like the Arctic. When a team of researchers based in Norway and Finland analyzed four sets of temperature data gathered by satellite studies since 1979 over the entire Arctic Circle, they found out that on an average, the data showed the Arctic had warmed up 0.75 degrees Celsius per decade, which is nearly four times quicker than the rest of the planet. The research further proved that climate models have actually underestimated the pace of polar heating and the situation in the Arctic is actually alarming. The study published in the journal Communications Earth and Environment also finding out that different regions within the Arctic Circle had different warming rates like the Eurasian sector of the Arctic Ocean warmed up seven times faster than the rest of the world. The repercussions of the intense heating of the polar regions will not only impact the local communities and the wildlife but will have a profound effect the world over. One result of rapid Arctic warming is faster melting of the Greenland ice sheet, which adds to the sea level rise. The impact, like I said, extends far beyond the Arctic. It will reach down to influence weather, like extre weather patterns like extreme rainfall, heat waves in North America and elsewhere. It will further alter the temperature difference between the North Pole and the equator, including storm tracks and wind speeds. And with me on the broadcast this minute is Eric Solheim. He is the president of Green Belt and Road Institute and former UN Environment Executive Director. Thanks for being here on the broadcast. Let me begin by asking you for your reaction to this study, which says that the Arctic is actually warming up four times faster as compared to the rest of the planet and not to the two to three times as was reported earlier. This is extremely serious, uh, and I think it also confirms what people can observe living in the Arctic. Uh, in Longyearbyen, which is the furthermost north Norwegian city at the Spitsbergen Islands, deep into the Arctic, uh, we have seen one heat record after the other. And as it stands now, we expect a seven degree heating in Spitsbergen in this century. And that is as much as the difference between the ice ages uh, and the non uh, ice age times uh, in the past. And of course, when we had ice ages, the entire planet's ecosystem were completely different, and uh, without ice, it was completely different. Uh, now, uh, this may have a huge impact on the people living there, on the ecosystems, on the animals. Uh, the polar bear, for example, can only live in ice. It is hunting seals in ice. It cannot live in any other ecosystem. So the, the, the results of this may have huge impact, not both, not both on, on the Arctic and the wider world. Eric, explain to us the implications that the rapidly warming Arctic uh, really has and what this means for the entire world. Maybe the most serious uh, impact is that when the Arctic is ice, it's white, and when sun shines on white surface, it's reflected. If it's an ocean in the Arctic, it will absorb the sun because the, warm, the water is not warm, it's cold water, but still it's, it's dark and it will absorb uh, the sun. So this will have huge effect on exacerbating the global, global warming in the en entire, entire world, not just uh, an effect in, in the Arctic. But of course, in the Arctic, you will see massive changes in the ecosystems and uh, new trade routes may be possible. We may be able to go by ship from Europe to China and India 
uh, or the East Asia uh, uh, in, in the Arctic, you may see huge changes, but it may also impact the entire world through this um, uh, wild surface cha changing to dark. And as you also said, if the ice in the in ice sheets in, in the glaciers in Greenland were to melt down, that will have a huge impact on uh, on the sea level uh, all over the world, everywhere, in India, everywhere. Right. So, uh, like you say, there are implications for the entire world, but clearly countries are not taking the climate crisis seriously enough. Uh, there have been a series of pledges and commitments. It all sounds great on paper, but uh, to what extent do you see these targets actually uh, being realistic and uh, being implemented and uh, the countries that have been promising uh, to make the climate crisis at top of their agendas? To what extent do you see these promises actually coming to life? The bad news is, of course, that we have been sleeping far too long. Many people have slept, and for sure the political leaders and business leaders, they're in a deep sleep very long. But now we see a sea change, in my view. We see massive action happening everywhere. In Europe, the European Union has launched a Green New Deal for Europe and the Green Taxonomy, which will drive the investments in a green direction. In the United States, President Biden just got his climate package uh, through in the Congress, which is a massive improvement. China, of course, is the lead nation on every environment technology. 80% of all solar panels in the world last year they produced in China. And half of all electric cars came into the global market in China. So China is definitely a green leader. And in India, we see Prime Minister Modi taking one green initiative after the other, launching green hydrogen mission for India, going big on solar, and just as a practical example, two weeks back, I was in the central Indian state of Madhya Pradesh, a meeting with, with Chief Minister Chauhan and others. And we see this massive change in the leadership in, in Madhya Pradesh. They want to make these states a green state, a nature state, a solar state. And they go massive on solar, both big solar plants, but also with the aim of making every single of the 24,000 panchayats in the state of Madhya Pradesh solar. And that's the new ambition coming from politicians everywhere in the world. And let's hope that we can drive that change together. Right. On that note, we're leaving it there for the moment. Eric, thanks very much for being here on the broadcast. It's my pleasure. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.